Hello, fellow campers. Welcome to Gatsby Camp. I hope you enjoyed it so far. My name is Ward Peters. I'm a technical lead at Gatsby, and I'll be sharing today what the future holds for Gatsby with the React 18. Let's dive in. I'm not going to share too much about what's new in React 18, but I do want to share the link below, which goes to the React Working Group on GitHub, where a lot of questions, answers, updates, and deep dives are being shared. Of course, I do want to talk about a few new features. For example, concurrent features. Yeah, you heard me right. I said concurrent features, not concurrent modes. The React team shifted away from the all or nothing approach that I had in mind. By default, React starts in sync mode, and then you can opt into async mode by using start transition, suspense, and other tools available. This makes upgrading way more easier. Another one is async rendering with suspense. And I see you thinking, hmm. But what? I could already use React Lazy and Suspense in my applications. And you're right, you could. But on the server, it would always fall back to the fallback prop. Now with async rendering, the generated HTML can come directly from the server to your client. No more spinners, no more fallback text. In short, a way better user experience. Another one is state batching. And I wouldn't really call it a feature. It's more like a life improvement. With React 18, it guarantees that all state updates getting batched together, which leads to less re-renders, less CPU cycles, and a better performance. Great. And then last, but certainly not least, server components. The React team gave us a killer demo in December, showing us the capabilities of server components. And we were blown away. I'll be sharing a little bit more about this later in this talk. And features are cool. But what do they actually mean for my user? Well, remember Core Web Vitals? Google Search Ranking now uses Core Web Vitals to rank your pages. And we've seen at Gatsby that React doesn't always play very well with TBT, total blocking time. I do want to emphasize that TBT is not being used by Google Search Ranking because it's lab data. Google Search Ranking uses field data, the equivalent of TBT's first input delay, FID. And this is still great with React. I can talk about performance all day, but sadly, today is not the day. With React 18 and your suspend boundaries, React can stop hydrating at certain levels. This allows the browser to do other things in between. Think about the very large landing page that you have your header, a lot of content, and then your footer. Why would you want to wait for the footer to be hydrated when it basically doesn't need to? Now with React 18, it's all possible. And I do want to add another hook, like start transition. This allows you to deprioritize certain state updates. And I have a demo for you. Well, Rick has a demo for you. This is a post from the React Working Group. And there's a demo where you have a slow computer and no tra start transition, basically what you're used to in React 17 and by default in React 18. As you can see, the slider is not very responsive. As a user, I want my user input to be immediate. What if we could fix that with wrapping the state update below, like the render here below, into a start transition? Let's see what it does with our page. Holy smokes, this was way more responsive. And this is what we want. We want the user input to be immediate, and then the render below can take a few seconds more. Another example of this would be an e-commerce website where you have a search input. While you're typing, you want the text to be there immediately, but the search itself can happen a little bit later. Now we'll go into a few developer experience features. I want to start off with query. Gone are the days of page queries. Gone are the days of static queries. Let's introduce, introduce something new called query. Basically, it's use static queries, but with variables. And it was very tricky to do before because how Gatsby worked was we look at all your components, we extract all the queries, we run them before we go to React. So we 
we query GraphQL, we get the data, and then we go to React, we say, here's all the data you need, render your HTML. Now with React 18 and the async renderer, we, we can start off our React render, and then it can wait at async task like a fetch to GraphQL, get the data and continue, which allows us to use runtime properties and, and more, which is awesome. Here's a small example how it will look like. On the left, we have page queries, like we're used to. We have an export of const page query. We have our query. It can use variables from page context. But then on the right, we have the use query hook. We have our query and we can add variables and the same output will be there. Maybe you've noticed as well that there is no is loading prop here. If you use Apollo, Urkel, React query, there's always an is loading prop. Now with suspense, it's not necessary anymore because when the query is loading, we'll fall back to the suspense fallback boundary, which gives you full control of the loading experience. Another feature I want to talk about is hybrid routes. And it's a big feature because it has nested routes, nested layouts, and basically making your static sites way more dynamic. And I do want to start with the basics. A lot of websites have a header, a footer, and their page content. And below, we can see the docs page. And you can visit it at getvjs.com slash docs. And here we have three pieces. We have our header, we have our sidebar, and then we have our page content. When you look at Gatsby, we pre-built all the pages at build time. This is great for a 10,000 site page, a 100,000 site page, but gets tricky when you go in the millions. And we have introduced new modes like SSR and DSG. But still, there are troubles when you change your header navigation. So when you change your header, we have to rebuild all those pages, which is going to take a long time if you have millions of pages. What if we make what if we could make Gatsby way smarter and basically figure out which pieces are fairly static? In this case, the, let's pick the header. What if we change the header and we only had to change the header fragment, the header.html? That would make it so that we don't have to rebuild all those, those million pages, but you just have to build one small page. This would be an instant build, right? This would be very awesome. And we can achieve this with layout components. Basically introducing underscore layout.js into our folder structure and other tools like Seltkit or Angular already do this. And then we have a regular React application, a React component where you have the sidebar, a div, and children. And basically the children are all the components from index and quick start. It's all again going to be wrapped automatically for you. This allows Gatsby to automatically get these page fragments and do it magic, do its magic. Of course, we also want to add some dynamic components like a page fragment com component where you have more flexibility as a developer. But now I want to show you something more. What if we could blend static and dynamic together? We have the same page, but I added some personal information like welcome word to the Gatsby way of building. And then at the top right, normally we say login, but now because I'm logged in, I can shift it to dashboard. What if we could generate this page 99% 99 static, and then those two pieces would be dynamic? That would be great, right? Because rendering a string at server time would be way cheaper than rendering the whole page, leading up to less costs for you and a better user experience for your user because things will be faster. And this will be all be possible by Gatsby hosting. Next up is server components. There's no way I couldn't talk about this. Sadly, it won't be shipped with React 18, but all the building blocks are there. So an upcoming version could have server components. We have seen with Gatsby, because we control the data layer, your application, we basically know everything about your application. This means we can go very, very deep. Now, what server components unlock is that you don't need all this JavaScript on the client. How React works today is you have your server bundle, 
which renders the HTML. And then basically you need all that JavaScript also on the client to do a React hydration. Now with server components, you don't need all the JavaScript anymore. The server can give us a React render tree. It's basically a JSON output of React. And then the React engine can do its thing and only need JavaScript for use effects, event handlers, and so on. And we've seen with landing pages or marketing pages that it can probably decrease it by 90% because a landing page doesn't really have that much JavaScript. It has some analytics, has some click handlers, maybe some state changes, but that's about it, right? And with Gatsby, we can, we can render the server components at build time or at runtime with the new rendering modes, but it gives you a lot of flexibility without compromise. Now you're asking, can I use these things today? Well, everything I talked about is experimental. We've been looking at it. We know it's possible, but we haven't done many much development on it. But you can use React 18 with Gatsby today by installing React at Next and React DOM at Next. This will enable the async renderer with Gatsby. And I have a small demo that you can do today. So I just did a Gatsby new, where I get a minimal starter. Then I installed React at Next and React DOM at Next, and I get these alpha packages. And then I go into index. I add the React Suspense with a fallback prop, then a Pokemon component with the best Pokemon of all, Pikachu. Then I go into my Pokemon component. I have export default React Lazy with a name property. I go to the Pokemon API with the name Pikachu. I get a JSON, and then I create a new component returning the Pokemon with the dynamic data. In newer version of React, like the experimental versions, there will be React Fetch, which makes this way more elegant. But in this case, I have to do this trickery to do this. And then the Pokemon component returns the Poke index, the name, and the image. And now if I look with Gatsby Surf, I can refresh the page. It's instant there which leads to there is no fallback. And then if I do a view source, I can also see that the number 25, the name Pikachu, and the image is here. That's very cool, right? I want to thank you for your time today. My name is Ward Peters. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me on Twitter at Ward Pete or in the Q&A after this talk. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.